Uh, before I recognize Senator Budd, I will uh, formally turn over the chairmanship uh, temporarily to Senator King. I have to go to the Appropriations uh, Committee. Senator Budd, you're recognized. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, General Hogg, thanks for being here this morning again. Thanks for your family. I enjoyed our conversation last week, so it's good to see you again. So I want to focus on AI. I know there's been lots of questions this morning. Um, and also talk about advanced computing. So do you believe that the United States currently holds an advantage in AI technologies? Senator, I do. Um, so one of the challenges faced by Cybercom and NSA is recruiting and retaining talent. And a lot of the focus has been on cyber operators. And we talked about that. Um, but we also need analysts with both computer science backgrounds and also language skills. So can AI that uses large language models to interpret and analyze audio text, um, or, or excuse me, audio or text, can that replace the need for analysts, or is that just a, is AI a tool to more empower uh, workers? And how, how should we be thinking about that? Senator, from, from our perspective, it would be an enabler for an analyst to look at the most important data that would ans answer a foreign intelligence question or enable our planning. So it would be an enabler, uh, not a replacement. Thank you. So I want to talk about the cyber threat posed by China. We learned this week that China hacked Secretary, Con uh, excuse me, the Secretary of Commerce Raimondo and uh, the State Department in advance of bilateral talks. So when we spoke last week, you mentioned that probably the most pressing challenge is China's advanced efforts to steal American intellectual property. So could you please further elaborate on that threat and why it matters? And if confirmed, what do you believe your role is to inform the public on and to respond to those attacks? Uh, Senator, the PRC uh, has done a sustained campaign over decades to steal intellectual property. And it really is intended to enable uh, their economy to be able to, to, to create economic advantage and also to buy down uh, the military advantage that the United States has. It's been persistent, it's, it has been continuous, and, and it will continue. From our perspective, it is our job, both as Cyber Command and NSA, to be a part of the team that exposes that threat. Today, if, if you go to the National Security Agency website, you'll see a series of reports that lay out in detail how China hackers operate and what that looks like. That's intended to very clearly pass out to not just our allies, but to our industry leaders, how China operates and how they can defend. So we should be being as transparent as we can. We should be collaborating with industry wherever we can and working with our interagency teammates to ensure wherever they have responsibility that we're clearly articulating the threat and we're thinking about this from a common defense perspective. I appreciate you making that publicly available and, and hope if confirmed that you'll make that even, uh, if you'll promote that, I think that would be, that'd be helpful. So you also explained uh, that China focused its AI on expanding information control. We talked a little bit about that this morning. Um, so what is Cybercom's role in supporting the interagency to defeat information control, and how confident are you in your ability to accomplish that task? So, so Senator, I think when, when, we're, when we're thinking about that, first and foremost uh, is we drive what activities we work are really aligned against what the other combatant commanders need. So when we're thinking from a cyber command perspective, we're, we're aligning what are the capabilities we need will be driven by those combatant commanders. From a national security agency perspective, uh, if confirmed in that role, it's really NSA's job to identify the threat and to be able to communicate that threat across our interagency to then be able to determine what's the best approach if, if that technology is being proliferated. Thank you. So how is Cybercom leveraging uh, commercial partnerships to combat threats and maintain our competitive advantage? And are there ways to do that better? Uh, Senator, I think right now uh, we do have collaborative relationships with industry uh, and particularly with small business. That's really where the department focused us initially. Now, as we gain our budget control and our acquisition authority, that will allow us to expand how we interact with industry and certainly be able to bring much more resource. That will enable us with, to operate with more speed and agility aligned with our requirements, and, and we're excited about that opportunity. Thank you, General. I wish you luck. Thanks. Thanks.